the second part of lecture three arguments for the African origins of Christianity where we left off we were talking about uh, point two the church born at Pentecost through the experience of the Holy Spirit shared by the disciples was established then as God's instrument to carry on the messianic ministry of Jesus and about how uh, the Jerusalem church um, that was founded by the disciples radical Jewish sect um, out of this notion of apocalyptic nationalism this belief that they were living in the end times and that the end times didn't mean the end of the world but to them it meant the end of um, oppression the end of the reign of the these this invading group um, being in control of Jerusalem their holy city and their people uh, different groups had different um, approaches to how they believe they could influence um, God to uh, intervene into human affairs, to human affairs, and thus bring about this uh, kingdom of God on earth. He had the Pharisees, the Zealots, the Baptists, the Mandians, the Essenes was the group that lived. Uh, they removed themselves from Jerusalem, feeling that the way the Hebrews were living was not in accordance with God's will. But the Essenes believed that if they could show uh, the Lord that there was a righteous remnant, a group that was willing to live in accordance to divine will, that God would then respond by sending uh, the Messiah. Um, and so there was this growing messianic movement, like I said, all these different groups uh, seeking to uh, usher in this new kingdom, uh, inspire God to go ahead and deliver that Messiah that they were calling for, hoping for, praying for, um, but it was all about fulfillment of the covenant promise of health, happiness, prosperity, and being delivered from oppression. All these groups were looking for the national redemption of Israel as the people of God, and they were all looking for the Messiah. Thus the church was born out of the desires of the people to be free out of the protest of oppression and mistreatment uh, the, Jerusalem surf, the Jerusalem church itself uh, viewed itself as a messianic community a kingdom of priests and a holy nation um, as it's stated in several Bible scriptures uh, they sought to be a, f a fellowship as a fellowship what Israel had failed to be as a nation I believe that if they as a church fellowship could live as a people of God they were the people of God they were supposed to, uh, they could mediate God power and help deliver Israel from earthly bondage. Thus they gave as they were able, received as they had need, and they sought to meet the everyday economic, emotional, physical, and spiritual needs of the people, this being the church founded by the disciples. Um, and so, you know, if if we following the logic recognize that you're talking about uh, a chronological time a geographical reality and biblical witness that all point to uh, this being an African people then the church that was born at Pentecost the church that uh, all Christians point to as the founding of the first Christian church then if we're talking about the birth of the black church then you can make the argument that that was actually the birth of the black church um, I think we're gonna cut it off here as the end of that particular lecture and uh, next lecture we'll talk about ancestral influences um, and how the, um, the religion of African people uh, traveled with them across the waters even though so much was done to try to um, distance African people from their beliefs. Many of those beliefs um, and customs, excuse me, made their way through, and many actually are still alive and well in black churches to this to this very day. So that's it for now. We will talk to you later.